how well does this laptop from 2009 run Windows 10? Let's find out. This is a Dell Inspiron 1545 from 2009. It's rocking a Core 2 Duos T6400 at 2 gigahertz, four whole gigabytes of DDR2 RAM, and a 160 gigabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive. For the graphics, it is running an ATI Mobility Radeon HD 4330 with 256 megabytes of VRAM. We're running Windows 10 64-bit. In terms of I.O., it's got Ethernet, VGA, two USB 2.0 ports, a charging port, and a Kensington lock. It has one more USB 2.0 port, a DVD drive, and some sort of a card reader. It has a headphone and a microphone jack, and an SD card reader. Shadow Wizard Money Gang, we love casting spells. The first game on our list today is BeamNG Drive which is running at 640 by 480 on the lowest settings, and we have to use an older version of the game, mind you, to achieve only 16 to 17 FPS on grid map with only one car. This may be playable for some people. I know I myself used to play BMNG at around 25 FPS, but this does not look very good. It doesn't run very well. If you try going on a, a map that is any more detailed than this, this computer isn't really cut out for the job. On to the next one. The next game is the infamous Car Mechanic Simulator 18, and it's actually running at a solid 20 frames a second. Now, it does have the strange artifacting that I saw on the 8400GS, if you remember that video. And this is on the smallest garage with no car. Let's see how it performs with a car. With the junkyard now getting a car. And, oh, that is not running well. We're getting 6 to 8 frames per second. Here, we'll just grab this one make things less painful. Oh, that is not good. And the computer really hated that. So with a car in the garage now, we're getting around 7 to 8 frames per second. This is totally unplayable. Car Mechanic Simulator 2018, unplayable. On to the next one. Now we have Factorio, running in a HD resolution for the first time. Wow! The HD re resolution in question being 1366 by 768, which is the native resolution of this computer's screen. We're running a fairly large factory, not not huge, and when zoomed out, we achieve in the mid 20s. When zoomed in, we can achieve almost 60 FPS, 50 to 60 FPS. Everything is turned up as high as it'll go. Uh, you can turn the settings down to achieve a more playable frame rate when zoomed completely out, but it's not really necessary for a slow paced game such as Factorio. On to the next one. The next game is Farming Simulator 17. We're running here in 1280 by 720 with everything on the lowest settings, and we're getting 30 FPS in this farmyard here. Let's go to a vehicle. We're getting 30 FPS, 31, 29. In the crop here, getting, yeah, 30 still. Lots of stuttering when the camera is moved. But the resolution can be turned down further for higher frame rates and a smoother experience. So, Farming Simulator 17, not the worst. If you have one of these laptops or something similarly powered to this, Farming Simulator 15 might be a good bet. On to the next one. The next slideshow we will be testing is the Long Drive. This one is running in 640 by 480 with everything on the lowest it will go. It's getting anywhere from 10 to 20 FPS, but sometimes stuttering. Yeah, it's pretty unstable. This is the one of the most intensive parts of the benchmark that I have here, when I'm viewing the entire house. And it's 10 FPS, 10 to 15 FPS. Oh, in the car we've got a smooth. On the road, we're hitting anywhere from 40 to 50 frames per second. So if it just wasn't so bad in that starting house, you could, say, just play it on the lowest settings in the starting house, and then once you get out onto the road, you could bump the resolution up to maybe 800 by 600. Let's see how that affects it. Now, in 800 by 600, we get 20 to 30 FPS. Fairly playable, and looks a whole lot better in this higher resolution. So if you play this game on a computer with a similar amount of power to this, when in the starting area or in any sort of building near any when you're rendering, say, more than one car, 
use the lowest settings possible. Went out on the road with one car, and 800 by 600 is totally playable here and can give you 30 to 35 FPS. On to the next one. The next game we're testing is My Summer Car. We're running here once again in 640 by 480 with the all lowest settings and we're getting around 15 TPS. But it is running and although it's not the best experience, there's little to no input lag, no frame tearing that I can really see, and no major stuttering. Is it playable? Sure. On to the next one. Street Legal Racing Redline is our last game of today, running in HD. We're going to go to the city, we're getting about 50 FPS in the garage, and after about 6 hours of waiting for it to load, on medium to low settings, Street Legal Racing Redline running in 1366 by 768 we're getting 50 to 60 frames per second driving around in the city and we'll get even more than that in the garage as we were getting 40 to 50 fps on high settings the game feels very very smooth there's little to no input lag in fact there's no input lag at all stuttering a little bit when you crash into a large object such as a tree or potentially another car the game appears to be running just fine so if you wanted to play older games such as this on a computer, such as this, it's easily done. Internet browsing is a little sluggish on this computer, although it does work. And YouTube playback, although it does work, at 720p, it is dropping a few frames. On 360p, however, it fares much better and is running a lot smoother. But it's not the most ideal for content consumption. General usability of the laptop is okay when you're not doing a whole bunch on it the battery will get two hours on a charge. Fairly good for a laptop that's 14 years old. So all up, this laptop in 2023, is it usable? Well, for someone who just wants to do things like word processing and running retro games, the laptop works fine. In fact, for, for word processing, it's quite good because the keyboard is very good. The trackpad is not awful, but it lacks support for gestures, which is annoying. It does have a webcam and microphone, although it is a 480p webcam. And you can just sort of tell how bad that will look. And we don't need to strain our eyes watching any footage that's come off that. Alright mate, we're here for a bit of a setup to a hey? Look at my exquisite uh, recording solution, eh? Uh, we go, we go, we got the PC. Yeah, monitors. I've got no money. The speakers are terrible, but that's not the laptop itself's fault. That's just 14 years of gunk and crap built up in it that's caused it to sound nice and crunchy. So in conclusion then, is a laptop worth it? I think if you just want a computer to be a computer, to do just basic things, it's perfectly fine for that. This has been Leo's Electronic Solutions, and I'll see you in the next one.